After a fantastic first season in Spain with Atletico Madrid, which saw us secure a fantastic treble including the Copa del Rey, La Liga and also the UEFA Europa League, my time in the Spanish capital would come to an end with a new challenge on the horizon. There was a lot of interest from major European clubs after such an impressive first season with the Spanish Giants and we still have a lot of work to be done. But after all, Rome was not built in a day. Signore e signori, siamo lieti di dare il benvenuto al nuovo allenatore. Yes guys, here we are. Welcome back to another episode of the Glory Hunter career mode. We have departed sunny Spain to make our switch over to AS Roma in Italy. And not only that, we have also signed a one-year contract to become the head coach of Portugal. Obviously, some links between Portugal and the man we have replaced at Roma, Jose Mourinho, whose birthday it actually is at the time of recording. So, happy birthday to the absolute goat. But... Yes, we have made the switch, guys. Obviously, uh, won the treble with Atletico Madrid last season in the Spanish capital, as we've said. And there was a lot of interest. We could have gone to England. We had a job offer from Germany as well. I won't disclose who those teams are unless you are interested. Drop a comment and I will let you know. But there was a lot of interest from major European leagues. But we decided to go with a little bit more of a project with AS Roma. You can see as we run through the initial squad hub, there was a lot of players put onto the transfer list. As I want to have a little bit of a rebuild, rebuild with Roma. I'm pretty happy with the starting team that we have. It's pretty similar to the real life team as we're only one season in, so there's not been a huge amount of changes. Obviously, there have been some AI transfers and you can see kind of how we're set up here. Um, but as we did run through the squad hub, you will have seen there was quite a few players placed onto the transfer list. But also on top of that, we had 19, yes, 19 players with their contracts up at the end of the year. You will see that we do give a few contracts out shortly, but there are a lot of players especially those aging players that are currently playing for a contract this season. Some may get extensions, some may not. We've also got a few players retiring at the end of the year, those being uh, Rui Patricio, who we're also going to be managing now at Portugal, and also Nemanja Matic, two players that I'm pretty happy to have in and around the squad this year as sort of experienced players but you can see we gave contracts to firstly Volpato a young Italian playmaker also Nicolo Zaniolo a player who I am very fond of not having the best of seasons in real life and looks like he may actually be sold by Mourinho um, but big fan of his on FIFA can play sort of in behind the striker or possibly even up top also gave a contract to Brian Cristante and uh, Leonardo Spinazzola. So trying to keep that Italian core, that is one thing that I do want to try and build in Rome with it uh, with Roma sorry of course and um, after those contracts decided to slip into something a little bit more comfortable um, as this episode there is a lot a lot of transfer uh, negotiations and players coming in players coming out so the rebuild really does begin in this first episode so I thought we'd slip into something a little bit comfier we've been in the suit uh, whilst we've been at Atletico Madrid, so slipped into the new uh, club tracksuit. But as you will have seen, we had a lot of players on the transfer list. Um, as I've stated, want to have a bit of a rebuild. There's a lot of players on the short list that I would like to bring in, which means that we have to make way um, in the squad with a few players. Um, one position you will have seen there that I wanted to... Uh, so bring someone in was at left wing back we're going to be sticking with this sort of three at the back formation and Matthias Vigna is not a bad player 
but I was quite happy to let him go because this is the man that I wanted to get in. Really low asking price. Antonio Conte, happy to part with the Italian. And um, after a few negotiations with Antonio Conte, we managed to agree a deal for Destiny Udoji, I think is how you pronounce it. Udogi, not 100% sure on that one. If you know for sure, let me know in the comments. Um, but we tried to offer offer a player at first. Obviously, we've got players that we're, uh, a lot of players that we're looking to shift on in this summer move. So if we can get any of them out of the club included in swap deals, then obviously that kind of works out for us. Um, but we managed to agree. I think it was a twenty-five and a half million pound deal for Destiny. Gave him a slight uh, wage increase as well. You'll see throughout this episode, a lot of the contracts that we give out are more sort of realistic, just so that, you know, we don't have endless amounts of money. We had quite a big budget anyway, and we're going to be raising quite a lot through player sales. Um, but the amount of times you sign a player and they come to you asking for a wage decrease is just ridiculous. So, quite happy to give players more realistic contracts uh, when they come into the club so you will have seen Matthias Vigna um, we agreed a deal for nine and a half million I can't remember exactly where it was that he ended up going to um, but he he left and uh, Destiny came in so really happy with that uh, sort of swap deal uh, one player departing one player coming in and um, yeah, Destiny will probably start in this team. Obviously, we've got Spinat Zola, who's now 30, I believe, in game. So quite happy to have the two of them kind of rotating. Obviously, you may have noticed at the start of the uh, career, I did put the standings from last season in. And uh, Roma actually finished in fifth last year, meaning that they won't be playing in the Champions League. Obviously, we won the Europa League with Atletico Madrid, so it's not a trophy that we have to win again. We've already ticked it off. But the reason I decided to go to Roma was, number one, I thought it would be an interesting rebuild. It's a team that I like a lot in real life. I've got a lot of players that I've got a lot of time for. And um, I thought it would be fun to do a little bit more of a rebuild rather than just going to like Juve or Inter where we're probably favourites to try and uh, win the Serie A. I definitely wouldn't say that Roma are likely to, to win it this year. So kind of makes it a little bit more of a challenge, which is what I was looking for after a really successful season at Atletico Madrid um, but yeah we'll be playing in the Europa League so likely uh, that we will be simming quite a lot of those Europa League games because we don't really have to focus on it unless we get to the latter stages then we'll start to take it seriously but that does mean that we can sort of focus on the league and the cup this year um, but having those two players on the left flank, Destiny, Udo, Udogi, Udoji, and uh, Spinazzola. We've got sort of, sort of one younger player who can learn from Spinazzola, the more sort of experienced head. So really happy to have those two players down at the left-hand side. On the other flank, we've got Rick Karsdorp and uh, Zeki Celik, who are already at the club. Quite happy with those two um, to stay for at least this first season. We'll kind of make a decision on a few players in January and in next summer's transfer window. Um, but guys, as I've been rambling on, there has been loads and loads of stuff going on in the background. As I say, bit of a rebuild in this episode. There's loads of deals going through, which I'm sure you've been keeping track on. Um, I can't remember all the outgoings that we've seen off the top of my head, but you uh, probably will have seen that we managed to sign the absolute GOAT, Thiago Silva, on a free obviously left Chelsea at the end of the season in this career mode and it's one of those he's 38 years old I think he's already declined a rating before I've even got to the first game of the season but in terms of like realism and just having like a veteran player I absolutely love that signing um, we're going to be playing a back three this year as well and arguably uh, Thiago Silva is best suited to play in the middle of a three obviously not being the quickest anymore at 38 Although saying that, he's been doing fantastic for Graham Potter playing next to Benoit Badia Shield in real life. But we brought him in to sort of provide cover and play in the middle in the heart of that defence just to be like a, an older veteran and um, provide some help to a few of the younger players in the team. Um, but he signed, and we, we also signed another 
um, free agent defender. I think his name was Fontana, and I found him in the free agents pool. I'm not sure if he's a regen. I think it may be Leonardo Bonucci's regen, but he looks really good, left-footed as well. So in this back three, can play on the left-hand side and looks as if he'll be really solid. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the season, he sort of nailed down that position and made it his own. Um, but a few more deals going through. Um, Maddie Kamara, I believe, went to Arsenal. There was a few other fringe players that we had offers for that we ended up letting go. Um, our backup keeper as well, Soraya. With him, I thought it wasn't really worth having him and Rui Patricio, who are both pretty decent. I was quite happy having Rui Patricio as the number one. So I didn't think it was worth having two pretty good keepers on the books. So I decided to cash in and let him move to Leicester, um, which meant that we had to bring in a backup keeper. And you may have seen that we went for a young Italian, I believe it's Carnesecchi. Uh, so he will be back up to Rui Patricio this year. Um, Rui is going to be retiring come the end of the season. So we'll make a decision goalkeeper-wise at the end of the year. If Carnesecchi is ready to step in, then fantastic. If not, then we can sign someone next summer or possibly uh, in January and sort of pre-plan. Um, but you will have seen that, obviously, like I say, Maddie Kamara had left, I think, to go to Arsenal. And also a player who wasn't on the transfer list, Florian uh, Neuhaus, had, an, uh, had interest from Barcelona and we agreed a deal with them. Um, wasn't a player that I was looking to sell, but happy to let him go for 32 and a half. He was a player who signed last summer for Borussia Mönchengladbach. But with those two departures, we obviously had um, quite a thin squad in the middle of the park. So decided to go to our Italian neighbours, Juventus, and we actually agreed a double signing for a package deal of, I believe it was £40 million for Nicolo Rovella, I believe it is, and uh, Fabio Moretti, two young Italians. Um, both quite well known on the career mode scene, and I thought with the two players going out, as I said earlier, we're trying to build an Italian core, um, both on relatively low wages for a, a team like Roma. I think they were both on the same amount of 60,000. And um, for realism's sake, we'll say that it was a package deal agreed with Juventus for the two of them. Yeah, Rovella and Moretti both coming in to provide competition for the midfield too and also a lot of cover. Obviously, we've got Pellegrini, the captain, who's more of an attacking player, and then Brian Cristante, who will sit a little bit deeper. Um, but we run through the, the squad hub a couple of weeks after being at Roma. Like I say, it had been a busy, busy few weeks. We'd already seen a number of players leave the club and a number of players uh, enter the club as well. Um, but like I say, you can see we've got kind of um, more squad depth in midfield. Obviously, Neuhaus looks as if he's going to be heading off to Barcelona. He's going back to Spain where we've just left. Um, we also brought in uh, Willy Nonto, who is a player that has been doing particularly well for Leeds this season. Just a young signing to, again, provide us a little bit more cover in the attacking areas. We've obviously got Tammy Abraham and uh, Paolo Dybala, who are going to be the main two this year. We've got Andrea Bellotti, who is another sort of more experienced head and Duzan Tadic, who can sort of play as a false nine, did that a lot for Eric Ten Hag at uh, Ajax. So we've got a lot of options. Nonto gives us someone who's a little bit younger, a little bit different to anything we've got as well with that absolutely rapid pace that he's got. I believe he's only five foot five, so repping for the uh, the the small smaller population. Um, but following that, we saw that Neuhaus left and also, um, I believe it's Gonzalo VR, I think. Um, he had an offer from Ajax, which was accepted. So again, we felt a little bit short in that midfield area. So we went for another Italian and similarly to Ravella and Moretti, 
a player who probably isn't going to get that much first team football at the team he was at that being of course AC Milan and we went after Tommaso Pabega who sort of on the fringes does get some game time in real life but we got him on quite a cheap deal I believe in the end it was uh, 24 or 25 million around that mark again on pretty similar rate uh, wages to uh, Moretti and uh, Ravella who came in earlier in the window but that just gives us so much more strength in midfield like I'd be so happy starting any of those guys that we brought in Ravella, Moretti, Pabega can all do a job um, coming in and stepping in for the captain Pellegrini or Cristante one thing that we did a really good job of in uh, Spain in just one season was building a really good squad I was happy for any of those players to come in and do a job for us um, the only position I'd say we're a little bit light in at the moment is possibly centre back We've got a few players like Montez and Kumbula who I'm not really sure um, are good enough to play in this starting eleven. And even the guys that we've got in there. Um, I'm quite a big fan of Roger Ibanez, but Smalling's getting on a bit now. Obviously, Thiago Silva's kind of been signed as a veteran, but I think I'd still maybe like someone who can play on the left side of that um, defence and then possibly move uh, Chris Smalling into the middle. Thiago Silva at 39, I think he is now. 38, 39 is definitely not going to be able to play every game. He's still 38 in game, but he's not going to be able to play all the time. So we're going to need a lot of rotation in that position. Uh, you will have seen a moment ago, we went through the contract situation. We've still got quite a few players with their contracts up at the end of the year. Some we will just allow to leave on a free. Others we may give a contract to at the, um, uh, or before we get to January, before they can be picked up on a free. And um, other than that, I think a lot of the guys will sort of leave. We've got Rui, Patricio and Matic retiring at the end of the season. A few players like Dusan Tadic as well, who's sort of getting on a bit now. I think he's 34 in game. But a good sort of start to our time with Roma. Managed to get rid of quite a lot of the deadwood that, that we don't really want at the club anymore and managed to bring in younger players, um, Italian homegrown players. I want to kind of build that Italian core. We're not going to stick solely to Italian players, but it's nice to have a kind of core group of players from the nation that we play in. So yeah, really looking forward to getting on with the season and seeing how we do with this team. Still got a lot of money in the bank. I think we've got over 90 million still um, to bring in some new players. So I've got a few names on the shortlist. Won't spoil it for you now, but a lot of players on the shortlist who we're looking to bring in. And you're also just getting a brief look here at the Portugal side that we've taken over. I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago before the end of the season with Athletic. Uh, we kind of wanted to take over a side that we think can compete. This side is kind of getting there. There's a few areas that they're a bit weaker, but I'm looking forward to the Euros at the end of this season with Portugal. We'll be in interesting to see how we get on with them obviously got some some really good players they don't always gel the best um, we saw that at the uh, the world cup this summer in real life um, but i'm looking forward like i say to see how we get on i feel like under my management i can get this team playing really well we did as you'll see here bring ronaldo back into the fold i, I kind of want to use him before he retires most likely at the end of this season so we brought him in um, along with pepe the experienced center back so it's going to be interesting to use some of these guys also brought in our new uh, club player Rui Patricio but obviously players like Liao, uh, Bruno Fernandes, Jao Felix, Bernardo Silva really really good players so looking forward to using them um, but that will do it for today's video guys I hope you have enjoyed and I will catch you for the next episode where we will have transfer deadline day and the season opener very soon peace <laughs>